As Batman and the MCU are always telling us, we can't all be superheroes. Try jumping down more than four stairs at once in the last fleeting seconds before your kneecap hits your jaw with the force of an atomic bomb shattering all the fine bones in your face simultaneously will be upsetting. Sadly, it seems Hollywood doesn't actually care about the reality of being a normal person, suspending the laws of the Grim Reaper even as the thirst for more realistic The Raid-style violence has grown exponentially. As more films become super-realistic, the idea of muscle-bound heroes who are essentially immortals is just painfully outdated, and it becomes impossible to accept that even the most wily of characters could have ever walked away from some of their biggest big-screen boo-boos. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are 10 movie victims who should never have survived their injuries. Number 10. Don Corleone, The Godfather Don Corleone has the auspicious accolade of being the most fearsome gangster in the history of cinema, despite not actually doing much to prove his credentials in the first film. He's old and respected, certainly, but it's only when an assassination attempt riddles him with eight bullets that you get the sense he's still clearly a threat and also very much double hard. And the would-be assassins clearly have justification in their overzealous attempt, as the Don manages to shrug off the bullets after a short hospital stay and walk away to mumble again another day. As most doctors will tell you, in real life, one bullet can be fatal. Eight bullets is seven more than the, than the one bullet. Than the, uh, than the Number 9. Indiana Jones. Several times. The world's worst archaeologist is basically as impervious to injury as you are to that intruder sneaking through your kitchen right now. Throughout the first three films, he survived some ridiculous things like jumping out of an airplane onto a mountain in a raft, or crashing over a cliff in a tank, and then walking away as if all of his bones wouldn't be all powdered and that. And then worst of all, in the fourth film, he survives an A-bomb by hiding in a fridge that is cannoned into the air like a shot put. Luckily, Indy is also part wily e. Coyote, and not only shakes off being pelted around inside like a pinball, but then also watches the pretty mushroom cloud from a distance that would also almost certainly kill him. Number 8. James Bond – Skyfall There are certain rules you have to accept don't apply when it comes to James Bond. He doesn't need to establish real relationships with people in order to have sex with them, he is allowed to be a weaponized sociopath, and of course, most importantly, he can't die. He's always slipped away from traps that were certainly perilous, but it isn't until Skyfall when he's really faced with death in the opening sequence. He's shot and hurled from a moving train, off a bridge, and into a river. Now, all of those things would kill anyone and anything you've ever loved, but apparently they were only inconvenient enough to Bond to send him on holiday. Number 7. Dr. Richard Kimball, The Fugitive in the iconic Dam sequence, Kimball decides that making an impossible leap is better than being taken into custody, jumping off the spillway into the ferociously rushing water below. Cue everyone, apart from US Marshal Gerard, Tommy Lee Jones, saying there's no way he could have survived that and symbolically wiping their hands clean. They were correct, as he would have been smushed quite comically, and if the fool hadn't done it, the current would definitely have dragged him under, especially as he would be weakened from the bus crash he'd literally just been in. Uh, fine though, he's fine. Number 6. Dewey. Scream and Scream 2 The goofiest sheriff in all of Hollywood was never supposed to survive. Even in the completed film, the shots of him after he's stabbed in the back by Ghostface show that he isn't breathing because Wes Craven originally planned to have him die, but then test audiences liked David Arquette's performance too much and he survived last minute. Bastards. Unfortunately, that meant that Ghostface just looked like a shoddy murderer, or that Dewey simply has a very specific resistance to multiple stab wounds since he again survives an attack that would have killed anyone else in the sequel. By Scream 4, Dewey's injuries have become a bit of a joke, which suggests that Wes Craven was fully aware of how ridiculous his survival was. Number 5. Tank – The Matrix Tank is a walking advert for not entrusting a computer programmer to be your muscle and soul security when faced with giant robotic killing machines. The Zion native is one of the victims shot by Turncoat Cypher with his giant electric gun that is so efficient there's no way he'd ever check on the vitals of whoever he shoots because they'd be dead. But then, after he unplugs a couple of his friends, it turns out that the definitely fatal gun that definitely killed Dozer somehow decided to be less powerful when he shot Tank who survived. And then, wouldn't you know it, the gun decides to work perfectly again when Tank shoots Cypher as he is killed instantly. How about that? Number 4. Michael Myers – Halloween 
Myers is basically the poster boy for horror movie supervillains, but without the usual human pitfalls like being allergic to getting stabbed in the neck, or in the eye, or being shot in the head once and five times in the chest. Those things would usually put a serious wrinkle in your day, but Myers simply continues on with his merciless plot to kill Laurie. A true inspiration. So what's the deal? Is he actually a ghost or just the grown-up evil incarnate Myers boy? If it's the latter, as we're supposed to believe, what the hell is his immune system made of that he can just suck bullets into his skull and be apparently fine? The army would probably want a word with him to find out. Number three, Gandalf, the Lord of the Rings. The Fellowship of the Ring. Gandalf's epic fight with the Balrog in the depths of Moria is a fine moment in the second Lord of the Rings film, but his resurgence completely robs his death of its emotional impact. But then, the wizard is a weird contradiction. He appears to be vulnerable to things that kill normal men, like swords, but can land on a beast made of fire and not be incinerated to death at all. Annoyingly, his non-death isn't really explained in the books either, and we're just supposed to believe that wizards level up through death. Even if it was divine intervention, he doesn't really do all that much to warrant it, no more than Boromir, who dies to save Pip and Merry. So what the hell? Number two. Anakin Skywalker, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. After having his heart broken and his mind poisoned by the Emperor to the point where he's no longer even believable as a real person, maybe that's just Hayden Christensen's supreme method acting, haha! <laughs> Young Anakin is left to die by his master, who totally black knights him. Seemingly unfazed by the loss of his limbs, Anakin then scorches his face on lava, as if that too wouldn't kill him with its insane, intense heat that then continues to burn his lungs to a crisp. Quite literally, not cool. Not cool at all. Number 1. The Bride. Kill Bill. What sort of assassin shoots a target in the head at point-blank range and manages not to kill them? And how terrible at your assassin job must you be not to check that the target wasn't completely, definitely taken out before you went off to have a party with a stolen wedding cake? Like a dick. In a universe in which it's possible for a character to die literally from having his tongue bitten off, it's almost unthinkable that the bride manages to somehow avoid the consequences of a definitely fatal bullet put inside her brain with such precision. How does it not impair any of her mental or physical faculties? I don't know. And that's our list. Are there any other unbelievable survivors we missed off? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can even follow me here on Twitter if you're fancy. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.